Chino XL, he had a song called The Riot where he dissed Tupac and he made a comment about Tupac getting violated in prison. And you actually was on that song. How did that song come about, yo? Um, well, we were younger um, and uh, we didn't have record deals. I knew of Chino from the Wake Up Show and, you know, super, again, he's another MC I didn't even mention, one of the greats, bar for bar, nasty. Um, but we didn't know each other back then. I was actually, uh, at the time I was still, uh, I was in a bidding war for who I was going to sign with. And so one of the people that would actually take the time to pick me up and pick my brain, a young brass cast, was Rick Rubin. So Rick Rubin would pick me up and give me dope dem like demos of, uh, like unreleased LL Cool J shit. It was crazy, you know? Um, but I didn't pick. Uh, American Records. It was Deaf American, then it just became American Records. So he asked me as a favor, could I do a song with the other artist he signed, which was Chino. Um, so I didn't know Chino. I just, I knew of him. And, uh, you know, out of uh, deference and respect to Rick Rubin, you know, I was like, well, definitely, you know. And so I did the record. Um, I, obviously, I wanted to go in and, you know, obliterate him. And apparently he wanted to do the same thing. So it was dope, you know, on some real MC, you know, go at it. Like, we started from scratch. Um, you know, Burr made the beat from scratch. We were in the studio and bar for bar. Like, I, he would write, I would write. He would write. And I'd try to switch the style up. Then he'd change the style up. and like, oh, I can do that too. So we really went at it. It was really awesome. Um, I, and my takeaway from that entire uh, experience was just how much... Um, you know, the reminder how deadly, like, I know I'm deadly, but it's deadly MCs out here. And Chino's one of them. You know, again, the Pharaoh Manches, you know, so many amazing MCs, and then the ones that passed. The, you know, I could just shout out like 25, 30 amazing MCs that aren't the most popular. Um, and that's what it's supposed to be, still sharp and still. So I know I'm deadly, and so are, you know, some other brothers, so many other brothers. But um, to make a long story short, when we got to that line, when he said that line, I, um, I was, I'm part of that family. I'm part of the Digital Underground family. I'm from L.A., but the first people that really took me under their wing before I even had a record deal was, was Money B from Digital Underground, so the little short one. Um, and by extension, the Loonies, by extension, Tupac, by, you know, Hump and all of them. So they always show me love, kind of sort of before L.A. really was showing me a lot of love as far as artists. Um and uh, I felt very, uh, I just felt like that it was, you know, I'll be honest, I felt like it was too far. And I had said, you know, I had some punchlines, but, you know, I guess it's, you know, I have a bias. I knew them cats, you know what I'm saying? And I actually, I knew Pac's Thug Life crew, you know what I'm saying, through Battle Cat and all of them. I knew all, of, you know, Raided and all of them. So I had a dog in that race, and I was biased, and I didn't like the line. <clears throat> um, I almost didn't finish the song because of the line. Uh, but, yeah, just because I was like, bro, I don't like that shit. I don't like that line, bro. And, you know, we worked through it, did the song. I kind of forgot about it, to be perfectly honest, until <laughs> Pac. <laughs> and Pac got the fuck Cheeto XL and fuck this. I'm like, oh, man. Um... And then I just remember thinking, like, fuck, me too. I'm on the record. I'm I'm doomed. Fuck me. I know it's coming. I'm just waiting for it. You know, I remember, like, the first time I heard, uh, um, uh, what you call him? Uh, call the cops when you see Tupac. Uh, 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 what, what, uh, what's the name of the record? I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, that was Hit Him Up, yo. Hit Him Up, exactly. Yeah, and I, I don't, yeah. Somebody had it. I don't, I don't know if it was a video or somebody was playing it and it just... I just knew it was coming. I was waiting, like, fuck Mob Deep, fuck Chino XL, and I was like, fuck Raz Cast. And uh, it just never, the, the ball never dropped. I'm like, well, it's coming. It's coming. I just knew I was in trouble, bro. Um, and then um, fast forward, um, I, uh, I had heard some of Machiavelli. And... I I knew that I was told already that Pac dissed Exhibit because of the paparazzi shit, and that was a whole misunderstanding. 
Um, but I was, I, I, I just, I remember telling my thug life homies like, um, and I, I think the outlaws too, because it was like an outlaw. It was a weird. It was a very interesting show. It was in the valley out here. It was the outlaws, outcast, razcast. So it was laws and Kazas and outs. I mean, it was Kazas and outs. It was outcast, razcast, outlaws, and we all had this show. And I remember the outlaws, and 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 the thug life cast was like, man, bad news. Pac, Pac dish your boy. <laughs> I'm like. Fuck, bro. Like, I was like, yo, tell Pac it's, it's a misunderstanding. And I basically broke it down. I was like, look, man, you got to understand. He is a superstar and he's able to put out records. Back then, it still took a certain amount of time to put a record out. Like, for a vinyl to come out, it took, you know, at least two to three months. That's like a rush order for vinyl. Um, it wasn't, no, we make a record and then we could just go to the net the next day. And... Pac was doing like two albums a year. Like he was, you know, killing the game. And he was able to make these songs in real time. Whereas what he had forgotten was that with us, it still takes us a year to get an album out. And so Exhibit Song Paparazzi was on his demo. And that was just a, it's a shame niggas in the rap game only for the money and the fame. So Exhibit Song was two years old. And got him his record deal. Then his video came out. Pop had already had three albums out by then, or you know, in that time period where it took us to get our first albums out. And it just so happened that on the "How Do You Want It" song, Pop say something like, "I want the money and the fame," you know. So you know, he say something to the effect. And then Exhibit shit came out after him, so it sounded like Exhibit was answering him. And it's a shame niggas in a rap game for because he said all I want the money and uh, all I want the money fuck the fame I'm a simple man something like that that's what Pac shit so he you know he he already on high alert about niggas you know slick talking him and and he went out at X but he never researched and if he would have thought about it he would have realized like oh yeah this nigga kind of got this song and shot this video that quick he ain't, who is this nigga you know what I'm saying to have that at that time that that ability to get a record out and a video out that fast, he would have realized it. But I just kind of doubled down and threw it out there. And then what I figured was that I was going to catch hell because of both. So now my my homie, you know, my, my, my ace boom coon, my, my, you know, my right-hand man, then they made a song that sound like he's dissing Pac's verse. And then I'm on a song where a nigga insinuates this horrible shit from prison. So I just knew it was, you know, on Machiavelli, I remember buying the album the day it came out, and I'm just like, Bomb First comes on, I'm like, I hear the exhibit shit. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't even Pac, it was one of the outlaws. You know what I'm saying? Got something for that nigga that made paparazzi. If you ain't in this game for the motherfucking fame, then what is your motherfucking purpose? Non-service. So I'm like, okay, he gonna let these niggas... So what I'm thinking was, they didn't want to tell me that they had to diss me too. You know, maybe they were sparing my feelings, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, some homie shit, like, sorry, bro, we had to get you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just waiting for the ball to drop. I'm listening. It's fire. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the song is fire. And then I made it through the first record. No Razzcast. Fuck Chino, you know, whatever. Then I kept going through the album. Then Hail Mary came on. I was like, this is a fucking phenomenal. Um, that's just, that record don't sound like almost nothing else Pac made. It's such a different record. That shit's crazy. Crazy record. Um, definitely inspired Nas, One Mike, and all that shit. Like, that record. It's, it, yeah, that's one of them once-in-a-lifetime lightning in a bottle. Like, that beat with that hook is so d different. Killed that record. Anyway, I say all that to say that uh, I got through the whole album. I never heard Razzcaz. So I had to go back and play it. Like, I must have missed it. Cause I know there's a fuck Razzcast cause I done heard fuck Chino and Biggie and Mob Deep and everybody else. And I'm like, I'm on here somewhere. I gotta be cause I'm, you know, I'm just, I was too much in the radar with the shit, but he spared me. And, uh, you know, I think that that's because, because of Shock G and Money B, Digital Underground. Cause he knew I was part of that family. And I don't, I don't know if, I mean, I'd seen Pac around a couple of times prior to, the misunderstanding, but I hadn't seen him, you know, after those misunderstandings. And so I was just very, you know what I'm saying? I was, 
you know, I, I, but I think he kind of knew, like, yeah, you know, Raz's part of the family. He didn't have shit to do with that. So I'm really grateful to him for not, uh, you know, not, you know, that would have that would have sucked for somebody you look up to. You know what I mean? To, to shit on you, and especially when you didn't, you know, didn't mean to be a part of of, of the bullshit. So I'm just grateful that he saw past it and then shit on me.